Hello class. Let's start looking at a new reaction in which we are going to take a look at the alpha carbon on a ketone or an aldehyde. So if we take and look at a structure that looks something like this, we have a ketone. What we do is we use the Greek alphabet to distinguish these carbons right here that are adjacent to, or that we're counting the carbons that originate from the carbonyl carbon. So we have a carbonyl carbon, and the ones that are directly attached to the carbonyl carbon are called alpha. So that one's alpha, and that one's alpha because they're directly connected to the carbonyl. When you go out further, that would be beta, beta, and this one would be gamma. <clears throat> and we're using this, we could, we could even extend it out if we just know the Greek alphabet. So if we extend it out, now I draw my gammas a little weird, so let's look at that here. Yeah, that, that's my gamma, and then we. What's the next one after gamma? We would have our delta. So it's just a Greek alphabet. And what we're going to learn is that alpha carbons can be reactive. We're going to do reactions on the alpha carbons, not the betas, gammas, or deltas just the alphas. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, let's say, a generic ketone. So we take a generic ketone like that. We could treat it with acid or base. Okay. And we're going to generate a molecule that looks like this. And that's going to be an intermediate. And then you take that intermediate and you're going to react it. And you're going to place something on that alpha carbon. Okay, so if we go first, you see here's the ketone, and there it is again, but what did we do? We attach something to the alpha carbon. So there's our alpha, there's an alpha, and there's our alpha. And we've attached something. This species right here, this intermediate, is called an enol. Why is it called an enol? En for alkene, ol for the alcohol. That is a enol. Now you could you can also do it another way in which you treat it with a strong base. And if you treat it with a strong base, you're going to get an intermediate. So it looks like this. And then you can take that intermediate and do chemistry to get to that. Now this right here is called a enolate. And as we discuss enols and enolates, what you're going to find is that most of the reactions that we're going to learn deal with enolates and a few with enols. But you can see that both of them get to the same product. 
but mechanistically and just practical, um, just practicalities here, we follow the enolate uh, route. And one reason why we do that is because when you take a look at the enol, if you look at an enol, we can see a resonance structure in which that can come down and that goes like that. And we will get a species that looks like this. Right. So there is a partial negative charge on that alpha carbon. Why is that important? Because that's alpha carbon is what's reacting with our X to form that alpha X bond. So that guy right there has a partial negative charge. But when you take a look and compare the enolate, if you have an enolate, we can have a resonance structure. That looks like this. Now we see a negative charge on that carbon, the alpha carbon. But when you compare the enol and the enolate, do you see how this guy's neutral, has a partial negative, but this guy, the enolate, has a full-blown charge. Because that has a full-blown charge, that just makes the enolates more reactive. And because they're more reactive, we can do better things, or more reactions, right? So you're going to find most reactions involve the enolate because they are more reactive, because they have more negative charge. When we take a look at ketones and enols, they are going to be at equilibrium with one another. And pay very close attention Going from the ketone to the enol, they're not resonance structures. They are in equilibrium with one another. Now, how do I know right from the start that these are not resonance structures? Because atoms are moving. No hydrogen, hydrogen. That is not a resonance structure. In resonance structures, only electrons move. But here we're seeing atoms moving. So we are at an equilibrium process. So at equilibrium, which one is favored? Instead, Typically, instead of calling this a ketone, we call this a keto form, and this the enol form. And at equilibrium, in most situations, it is going to be the keto form that is favored. Another reason why enols are less reactive than enolates is because we need that negative charge on the alpha carbon in order to react. And we can only get that negative charge there when it's in the enol form. Now, in the enol form, that negative charge is only a partial negative charge, but it's something. But now we're fighting equilibrium. At equilibrium, the keto form is more stable. So you're going to get very, very little enol, enol, which only has a partial negative. So the reactivity is just not that great. Now, are there exceptions to this? Yes, there are. And in the textbook, it shows a couple examples. I'm not too worried about that. I want you to understand the general idea here that the keto form is the more, it's favored at equilibrium. Now, we need to be able to do the mechanism or the transformation between these two. So when you go from the keto to the enol, or the enol to the keto form, that is called tautomerization. 
Now let's find, so that process here, Tautomerization. Now, this tautomerization can occur under acidic and basic conditions. And I want to show you how to do that. Now, I'm going to show you under acidic and basic conditions, but in the forward direction. You need to understand that you have to do it in reverse as well. So what you have here is the keto form and the enol form, but four ways, four mechanisms. Two in the forward direction with acid catalyzed or base catalyzed. And then in the enol form, going back to the keto form under acidic or basic conditions. So let's take a look at it under acidic conditions first, okay? So if we have acidic conditions, that's going to be our electrophile, electron poor. So where's our electron rich species? Well, the oxygen, right? So we're going to use that oxygen now to grab that proton. Now, all of these steps are at, um, reversible. Okay. And that would be positively charged. And we generated some water. And now we have a alpha carbon. And attached to the alpha carbon is a proton. So we refer to this proton as the alpha proton or the alpha hydrogen. And that alpha, hyd alpha hydrogens are acidic. We generated some base, so that can come in, break that bond, and like that. And then that's going to give us our enol. So there's our keto keto form and the enol. And so that right there is the acid catalyzed the tautomerization. Now, I want to take a moment here and just look at the alpha proton for a moment. <coughs> Why is the alpha proton slightly acidic? Well, the reason why is because what do you have? You have a resonance stabilized species. So let me let me demonstrate that a little bit better. So why is the alpha proton acidic? Well, if we take a base and abstract that proton, let, let me draw it like this. Why is it so acidic? It's because the conjugate base is stabilized by resonance. So here we form the enolate. That's why the alpha protons are acidic. What if I expanded this guy out to look like this? So here we have two alpha protons right there. But why is the beta hydrogen not acidic? Well, let's just do the, our same analysis. If we have a base coming in and abstracting that proton, Is that anion right there, is that resonance stabilized? No, it's not resonance stabilized. So when we look at a ketone or an aldehyde, 
it is the alpha protons only that are acidic. So f that reminds me, what if we take a look at a, let's convert this guy, well, let's just draw it right here. Okay, so we have our alpha, our beta, and our gamma. What if we turn it into an aldehyde? When you look at this aldehyde here, are the gamma hydrogens acidic? No. Are the beta hydrogens acidic? No. Alpha? Yes. Why? Due to resonance. But is the aldehyde hydrogen acidic? No, no, no. It's not acidic. Okay. Just the alpha. So now let's finish this up by looking at the base catalyzed um, tautomerization. Okay, let's take a look at tautomerization under slightly basic conditions. So we will represent it with the hydroxide. So we're under basic conditions, so we need to find, we'll use the base to find the most acidic proton, and those are the alpha protons. We could do that. Negative charge there. And then you can see a resonance structure, which that comes down like that. And in this resonance structure, we'll see that there's some negative charge on that oxygen atom. And we just generated water from right here. And so we would have a proton transfer step here in which we go like so. to generate our enol. And that is the base catalyzed tautomerization. Right? It's simply just going from the keto form to the enol. Okay. So that's where I'm going to stop today. And yeah, that's what, what what's going to happen.